Now, we've all heard of the hyperscalers, the Facebooks, the Googles of the world. But did you know they have a trick up their sleeve? They actually profile every single line of code in their data centers, and it allows them to answer the question, what is our most expensive line of code? And then they can go and attack that line of code and make their services more efficient and faster for their customers. And what Elastic is going to do for you, for our customers, is we're democratizing that capability so that you can profile everything all the time, all code, all systems. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, we're using this new technology called eBPF, which is something that's built into newer Linux kernels. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to provide profiling with zero instrumentation, which means that the administration overhead of deploying this solution is significantly less. And you can start to get insights into what your most expensive lines of code are immediately with no code changes and no app restarts. Next, we'll give you whole system visibility from the kernel through user space into high level code like Java across all your cloud environments. We do this with extremely low overhead so that you can put this on your most critical applications and start to get unprecedented visibility into which lines of code are causing you the most pain. We'll help resolve and improve your issues with faster mean time to discovery We'll identify and analyze your most expensive lines of code across your entire fleet, across all of your data centers. And we'll do that with all of your applications. It doesn't matter whether they're written in Ruby, C++, PHP, or Java. Right, now we've got a demo for you that shows you how you can get all of these benefits in your environment. And we're gonna go through three scenarios here. The first one is, Pretty typical, I've seen this myself in production in a number of places. Why is my service initially slow when I restart my JVM? Or why does the JVM take so long to start up? So that's the first thing we're gonna have a look at. The second thing we're gonna have a look at is where is my most expensive line of code? And we're gonna look at Elasticsearch and see if there's anything in Elasticsearch that we could potentially go and improve. And finally, we've got an issue that we've seen where when we scale up, a particular service is suffering. Can we find out what lines of code are causing that problem? We certainly can. So let's dive into the demo. So this is Elastic Universal Profiling. And the first page you'll see here is a, a view of all the stack traces taken from all the containers within our environment. And you'll see here various container names like Beats, for example, which is a familiar Elastic service if you are also familiar with Elastic. Now, these are all the containers and it shows how much CPU time each container is taking up. But we actually wanna get a little bit more granular than that. In order to solve our JVM issue, we really wanna see what individual threads are doing, which is a little bit more granular than individual containers. So let's dive into the threads view over here. So here we have the threads view and we can see which threads are taking up the most CPU. And actually one stands out straight away. This one that's in pink here definitely looks like it's taking up more CPU. Let's have a look at what that thread is doing. Ah, it's a C2 compiler thread. Now, if you're familiar with Java, you know that what this thread does is it compiles classes. Particularly, it's gonna be active when we restart our JVM. So we can see here that indeed, compiling classes is taking up a lot of time when we restart our JVM. Now there's a lot of interesting ways that we could potentially solve this problem. One of those ways is we could tweak the JVM startup options to make it take less time compiling classes on startup or we could even compile our Java classes to native code ahead of time using Graal VM. That's the one I like most. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be saving a significant amount of CPU if you look here across all these instances when I go ahead and do that. So it looks like we've, we've made a good dent in one particular issue. So let's move on to the next issue. 
how do we find our most expensive line of code in the Elasticsearch service? So let's scroll down here and we have uh, Elasticsearch here. So I'm just gonna dr drill down into Elasticsearch there. And that brings us to traces. It brings us to traces that have been taken of our Elasticsearch service. Now, if we go down here, we can see the top 100 traces that have been taken and uh, we can start to see the stack trace for each one of those traces. Now this is great, but I really want a holistic view. I wanna see what are the top 100 methods across all of these stack traces that are slow within my environment. So I'm just gonna head over to the functions tab, which is over here and have a look at exactly that. So here's the top 100 methods that are taking up the most CPU within the Elasticsearch service. And there's one here that stands out to me, this one at number three, this hashing function. I know from my own personal experience that that is something that we could replace very, very quickly with a different hashing function and probably save ourselves a significant amount of CPU. So this is one of our most expensive pieces of code. And we very quickly determined that we can make it much more efficient, which will mean that it will be much better for our customers. It will be a faster piece of code. It will run more efficiently. It will use up less CO2. And so finally, for our last particular problem that we've tried, we're trying to solve here, we, we've got this issue where when we scale up, a particular piece of code doesn't like it when we're trying to scale up uh, to more pods in our environment. So we wanna go and check out that particular issue. So I'm gonna go over here and we'll see the containers view again. And we can see here that in fact, actually there are some containers that don't seem to like it when we scale up because this time period here is one of the time periods where we're doing a scale up event. And then after that, it kind of goes back to normal. But during a scale-up event, there's a few containers here that do not seem to like being scaled up. And there's one in particular here called vMedia. And I'm going to just drill down into this vMedia container and try to understand a little bit more about what's happening there. And this time, I'm going to use the flame graph so I can get a view of all the methods and all the functions that are running within that container that are taking up time on the CPU. So let's just go over there and have a little look at that. Okay, so there's some methods here. One that actually stands out immediately to me is this token info method. We can actually see that that's taking up quite a lot of the CPU. Now, I wonder why that is. This looks like an authentication operation that's happening. So I think probably what's happening here is that when we scale up, authentication seems to be suffering a little bit. It's not, it's not coping too well with that scale up event. And one thing I wanna do is I wanna compare this flame graph to another flame graph that was taken previously when we weren't scaling up. So that I can see that yes, this piece of code is suffering when we do a scale up event. So we can compare a flame graph that was taken previous to our scale up event and a flame graph that was taken during our scale up event. And I can do that by clicking on this differential flame graph tab here. Now what the differential flame graph tab will do is it will take that, that comparison and where it sees that a particular method call has gotten worse, you know, so during the scale up event, it will color it in red. And actually we can see here that yes, this particular method, this token info method, is performing worse during a scale-up event because it is actually slightly red, as you can see there. So this has been great. We've actually managed to solve three different issues using the Elastic Universal Profiling tool. And I'm very happy now that I have a lot of things I can do to go and save my customers time, money, and make the services more efficient. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. And next up, we've got Mike.